Welcome back, Paul George. Doing it on both sides. Game high 20 in that first half in there with the impressive block in transition. Welcome to the American Express halftime report. Greg Anthony here with the Hall of Famers, Isaiah and Kevin. Guys, thoughts on that first half in terms of what you saw from the Thunder? I, I like the way that, you know, their ball movement is excellent right now. They're taking good shots. They're sharing the basketball. And right now they're playing winning basketball offensively and defensively. Yeah, I thought the Thunder came out. I thought Russell thought he was hot from warm-up. Yeah. He took three or four test shots, and then I don't have it tonight. <laughs> he just passing and moving. He only took seven shots. I like this version of Russell Westbrook. I really do. He took, he took a couple heat checks early to see if he had it. Now he just plays basketball. He's, he's making passes, and Paul George is on fire. He's just playing at a pace. Like, when you're, when you're playing basketball at that, where he's at, everybody looks like they're going slow to you. Like, you're dribbling yeah. the ball. You're looking around. Like, I'm just going to – yeah, I think I'll shoot it now. And he's just on a, such a roll. And I, I, I like to see a guy just get hot like this and keep filling it up. Yeah. And, and what he's doing also, guys, it, it takes a lot of energy to score at this level, but he still brings it defensively yes. Yes. every night as well. Yeah, and, and I mean, in our league right now, he, he Kawhi Leonard, they're, they're like the ultimate two-way players. And, you know, we forget to say Clay Thompson a lot, yep. but, you know, Clay is in that group also. But... You know, those guys, you know, they bring it every night on both ends of the court, and you respect that. Yeah. And they guard the other team's top guys. When the guy yeah. gets hot, they say, put me on him, coach. So they love the challenge. I, you know, those guys, yeah. boy, having those guys on your team is huge. And you guys talked a little bit about Westbrook. His evolution, is it fair to say maturation at that position? Because he seems to be almost a pass-first guy. Yeah, I, I mean, his, you, you know, when we talk about maturation, you know, we, we always compare to the physical as opposed to the mental. But his mental mat maturation has been, you know, fantastic in this league. You know, he he's passing the basketball well. Mm -hmm. He's become a very unselfish player. He's not judging himself by how many points he scores, but he's judging himself by how many points he helped others score, and you just, which makes a big difference. Uh, and you just talked about, you know, the maturation of him. How about he's coming down and he cross he sees – Adams, but he was he wanted to he wants to give Adams space. He crosses over to yeah. here to drop the ball back here to give Adams all that room. Yeah. You're playing at a high he's playing chess at that point. You're not playing checkers. Checkers the guy just throws it behind yeah. everyone's a big jumble. Yeah. He just he he decided out there that he was gonna cut cut across the lane to give Adams mm -hmm. space. Again, he and George are playing mentally at a yeah. really nice pace. Yeah. And I think honestly, I think part of Russell thinking I don't have to lead the league in scoring has eased his mind and made him a better just passer. I mean, because mm -hmm. he's, he's always had the talent, but now he's adding just, like I say, just that little move there. I'm like, man, when you're a big guy, I played with Tiny Archibald. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were the best guys. They, they, they just created the space for you. It was fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now listen, Portland down seven, but they're there in part because of the rebounding plus 12 on the backboard. And, and Nurkic has been solid for him in that first half. Yeah. You know what? I, I was kind of surprised that Nurkic was able to get off a little bit on. Uh, on um, Adams, because Adams is so strong, a yeah. physical player. But you saw him right there. He's sprinting the floor, boxes him out, stops the break. And again, the big guys have got to get in the paint. Just him being in the paint like that stops all kinds of penetration. He's there, and again, you know now you're going to have your hands full here when the ball goes up, because you got to go fight, and you got to fight Adams. And Adams is a great offensive rebounder. So I'm just impressed again with him. He gets in here. Actually, Adams travels right there, but he gets up and gets a hand on it. His ability to get back in the paint and cover up, I just think that helps you guard so much. Because if he, as a guard, if you see a big guy standing in yeah. here, just, you know, chest waiting, towards you, waiting, waiting, waiting. It, it, it makes everybody more passive. So he's done a really nice job defensively and offensively gets to the open spots. He just knows how to play off those guys. He gets the open spots, hits the boards. I'm liking Nurkic. I just need to see him do this every single night with this amount of energy, this amount of effort. That and, I, it. and I think when he's playing against a guy like Adams, yeah. He, he gets to use the physical elements of the game that he's not used to using against other players yeah. because the game is officiated so differently. So big guys, y'all have like judo moves, I call. You know, <laughs> I mean, y'all like know how to elbow a guy. Yeah. And if he puts his do elbow on you, then you know how to yeah. swim. Yeah. Then you know how to take him here. Then yeah. you got the little knee. It's like down there, such, <laughs> such yeah. physical, you know, maneuvering. And it's all subtle moves down there. And I think... Adams and Nurkic probably both are having a good time exploiting their skills. Yeah. yeah, they've been going at it. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at what else is going on around the league. Rock'em, Siakam.
getting it going Ooh, up north so for the good. Raptors, who just he is quietly great basketball. continuing to go about their business of winning games. <laughs> going on in Oklahoma City as we get ready for this battle. DZ? Well, guys, first of all, it's a little chilly here in OKC. I don't know what the weather is. Back it's in cold Atlanta. here, too. It's yeah, cold Atlanta's there, too? Cold, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that being said, hopefully the cold weather stays outside the arena because OKC Thunder is playing better defense. That slipped a little bit. Paul George playing at an MVP level. And you talked about Dame Little and C.J. McCollum. Now we have to talk about Nurkic. He's playing better basketball. He's just talking to some of the guys as they're warming up. Nurkic is tired of people saying who's the third guy for Portland. So it should be a good ball game tonight. It, it really should. And, and, you know, you look at this Thunder team, all the talk coming in, was how great they'd been defensively, but that's not been the case here uh, of late for this group, DZ. What's the thought process with how they're playing on that side of the ball? Well, they understand that teams have come into their building and shot the ball with confidence. And the first team that comes to mind the other night when the Los Angeles Lakers came in here and played lights out basketball with Kyle Kuzma shooting the three and getting anywhere on the floor like he wanted to. So they realize teams are going to come in and give them their best shot. They need to regroup. Guys off the bench understand when they come in, they got to lock down and play good team defense. But no panic. I say it again, no panic because a guy named Paul George is playing really, really good. You know, 3D, they're they going up against a, a, a great backcourt tonight uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, Lillard and, and McCollum. What strategy do you think they will implement tonight defensively to try to slow those two guys down? Well, try to keep them off the three-point line. And when they spit the double team, Isaiah, you know this. You're one of the best to ever do it. When they spit that double team, make sure those big guys step up in the lane like Kevin McHale used to do. And not so much block the shot, but deter the shot and try to get some of those shooting percentages to come down. Because we know you're not going to stop them all night long. We want them to work for every shot they get tonight. You know, Dennis, what I want you to do is go tell Adams that Nurkic wants to have a big game tonight because I want to see <laughs> what Adams does to him. Uh, I, look at, uh, I look at OKC, and I think Adams just really, when he's playing well, he's defensive rebounding, he's offensive rebounding, but he's really clogging the paint and just helping recover. Talk to me a little bit about Adams and Adams' ability to really help that um, OKC defense. Well, I think Paul George has done an excellent job, guys, believe it or not. Throwing the ball down low to, to your point, K-Mac, to Steven Adams, let him touch it. He doesn't always try to shoot the basketball because he's a great passer out of the mid post. So sometimes let the big guy eat a little bit. He sets better screens. He defends more for you. And now you can get out and run and get easy baskets. So 3D, right. is, there, is it raining out there? Is it snowing? Because we just saw a shot yeah. of Adams walking in. Yeah. He looked like the Obama well, yeah, it was raining. Oh, yes, was yes. that guy? It was, it was raining earlier. It stopped raining, but man, I cannot lie. I didn't bring my big coat. I bought my southern coat. I'm man, chilly. Man. You, you, you can get up Hold under on. his coat. Hold on. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of guy when you're walking down the street, you see him coming, you go to the other yeah, side of the street. Right? You're going to take all the running. Who is that guy? <laughs> all right, DJ, we're going to check back in with you a little bit later. Let, let's talk a little bit more, guys, yeah, about this Thunder team. because. You know, when the season started, they probably had as many question marks as anybody after how the season ended a season ago. But defensively, they were a juggernaut for quite a while. But then now it seems like they've hit a stretch where defense has not been their calling card. Do you see them returning to that? And also, do you guys see them as a legit contender in that Western Conference? You, you know, I, I was one of the guys early in, in, in preseason. I wasn't sure if, if OKC in thinking that the West would be as tough as it is. With Russell missing games, with Westbrook missing games early in the season, I didn't know if they would fall so far behind that they wouldn't be able to make up the, 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 the games. However, you know, they, you got to give Billy Donovan a lot of credit because he and Paul George and that group, they did a great job of, of holding down the fort. And when Russ came back, they just took off. So, you know, I, I, I like where they are defensively. And I think there's so much room to grow and improve for the OKC Thunder. Yeah, I tell you what, when they're playing good defense, they're switching to deny the passes. When they're not playing good defense, they're laying back off it. And, you know, we get a switch down here. You know how hard it is when guys can fly and not switches. You're uptight, you're denying, you're getting mm -hmm. handed. They get deflections, they get steals when they're doing that. What I've seen lately a little bit is they've been a little bit more passive on the defensive end, allowing those passes to flow freely on the perimeter. I just think when they're up pressuring, they're much better team. So we'll see tonight if they get back to pressure, how many deflections, how many steals. And the reason that I'm believing in this team, uh, 
you ask, you know, where can they go in the playoff? When you can score off your defense, that gives you such a big bounce, especially in the playoffs when, yep. when scoring becomes at a premium. When you can get four or five of those deflections for runouts and get yourself 12, 14, 15 points off those, off those deflections and steals, that's huge. And so I'm believing in this team. I favorite thing about, you know, the OKC lately is that Russell Westbrook is not pressing his offense. He's not having those six for 30 games. He was six for 12 last night. Yeah. Damn near had a triple double, had yeah. 10, 10 uh, rebounds, nine assists. And when you can control the game by taking 12 shots, yep. Yep. you are a basketball player. You're yeah. not a numbers correct. Yeah. Come and there. and that, that used to always be the, be the judge of, of if your point guard is, is really controlling the game by, you know, how many shot attempts he has to take or doesn't take. And the average was about, if you can take, if you took 12 to 15 shots a night and you can control the game that way and you have your imprint on the assist box, you're sharing the basketball, that's when you knew you were doing, you know, a great job. And then guys like Magic would come along and they control the game with four shots. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you would be like, hey, hey we're, not, we're, not, we're not even talking about you tonight, exactly. Magic. You know, yep. you're in a totally different category. But, but that's what Westbrook is doing. And not only that, he's, all, he's also accepted the challenge of becoming a better defender. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've ever heard him really talk about becoming an, an, an elite defender yes. as opposed to being an elite offensive player. And when you have he and Paul George as two elite defenders on your team, you got a chance night, to beat anybody. And, you know, wrapping up on Westbrook. He's not getting those three or four extra layups he got a game because you know your shooting percentage looks a hell of a lot better when you're yeah. beating everybody and you're getting four or five six layups at the rim. He's not he's not getting those right now. I'm not, I don't know if he's just doesn't quite have the explosiveness he had or whatever. You know, he's such a freakish athlete, but he's just not getting those shots. And so those always make your shooting percentage look a hell, yeah. a hell of a lot better. And, and do you guys think though, big picture, this is a team that doesn't shoot the three well, although they were terrific in their last game, shot 52 percent from beyond May 15. But along with Westbrook and this group, do they shoot it well enough, though, to, to where they can really put some fear in some of those elite teams in that Western Conference once we get to the postseason? If the right people are shooting, if Abrinas can come back and get healthy, he's a good shooter for him. Paul George makes his share of threes, you know, shoots a decent percentage from the three-point line. I'd like to see them add another shooter. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, it, it, to me, the three... It's all relative to who's shooting it. If you have 20% shooters shooting a lot of threes, you're going to be a lousy <laughs> three-point shooting team. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of math to figure that out. And sometimes they have the wrong people shooting the threes. Yeah. If they have the right people shooting the threes, put them in the right position, you got some drive, you got some kick going out, yeah, I'd like to see them add another shooter. I really would. You know, I think it just fills out their roster. But again, you know, I, I, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. San Antonio has the right people shooting threes. And they don't shoot a bunch of them, but they make a bunch of them. Yeah. They make a high percentage of what they shoot. I think OKC's got to have a little bit of some, some of that. That being said, I'd like to see them uh, trade for a shooter if they could. I, I agree with Kevin. I, I do think that at some point in time uh, during, this, during this period, they have to seek out a three-point shooter to add to the roster. But that shooter's got to be able to defend also. Yes. He just can't be a guy that's a, a specialist that knocks down shots. He's got to be able to defend on both ends so they can play him and keep him in the game. Yep. And I also think that shot selection is extremely important. And what I'm seeing with OKC right now is their shot selection has become much better. Mm. Uh, and if they continue to have good shot selection, then they'll be okay. Okay, and speaking of selection, I'm going to select this moment to give a shout-out to my kids. My daughter, Naomi, and my son, Tyson, are watching hey, the big hey, fans. Hey. And up, also kids? interact with all of us here socially on, at NBA TV. Not myself, me. Myself, at Anthony 50, I, at Isaiah Thomas, and at Kevin McHale. Just try it. Some, you never know. Somebody probably has that account you, right now. The problem is it's that actor, and they keep on mistaking me for some 4-foot-11-inch actor. And I'm like, that is not me. I promise you. I'm 6'11". <laughs> All right. <laughs> you you get mistaken for the